Hi there. Today I'm looking at this very simple scene of a, an oak tree. Uh, very quick and easy to do. Um, we're going to use sponges, put a background on, use some sponges to get the foliage and the texture and then paint in between it. Quite quick and simple. The instructions I have written down on a little sheet here for you. So all the colours and things are listed down there which you can download off the site if you want to. Okay, let's get going. Right, let's have a go at doing this um, summer oak tree. This is the one I see out of the window at work all the time. So I'll just show you how to do a simple little view of a tree um, with a bit of sunshine behind it. So first of all, I'm going to put the background in. This is 300 gram weight Bockingford paper. Um, and I'm going to use a mop brush now to wet it with. This is a big, soft brush. Um, some people use a hake which is like a big square one. Use clean water, not grubby water like I'm doing. I'm just doing that so you can see what I'm doing. She lied. Um, and some people use a hake to put the water on. Um, I've got this squirrel mop, but I've also got a couple of other mop brushes which I use. As long as it's a very soft brush and it doesn't scratch the surface of the paper. So this is just like your undercoat, this is just your background. So again, it's on a board, slightly tilted so it doesn't sit in a puddle in the middle. So you can move it around, make sure you haven't got any dry patches in there, um, things like that. So I'm just going to take any puddles out, so it's just an even coating of water. Um, I have previously mixed up the colours I was going to use, I should have run through that. I should have run through that with, with you first of all, but we're going to use a bit of blue for the sky. I'll do them as I, I come in here, but always make sure you mix your colours up first. So we're having a bit of a blue for the sky. You can use whatever blue you want to really. You can use a bit of ultramarine blue or um, cobalt blue or um, a mix of ultramarine blue and Elysian crimson. So this is just where your sky is. So just putting that on, just wiggle your brush around to leave you some little shapes of clouds. You could dab out a few clouds if you wanted to, but it's just nice to just bring those in. I'm just putting a little bit of water with that to keep it softer as it comes down here. It's a little tad strong as I first came across here. Um, and again, just add in a little bit more blue somewhere around the top here. You're going to cover most of this with tree anyway this time. So I haven't drawn anything at all, first of all, just bringing up those, those sort of colours. And then I'm going to leave a little bit light there. Then I'm going to start off with a very pale yellowy green into the background here. Just a very pale yellow, touch of um, cadmium yellow and a bit of ultramarine blue, just to give you the, the distant fields, the distant, distant hills there. It's all background and not particularly important. It doesn't matter if it runs into the blue a bit because it will just go a greeny colour, which is fine. Then I perhaps put a, a little bit of burnt sienna in for a, perhaps a, a field or something behind that. Then as I come forward, I'll make these washes a little bit stronger. So we want a bit more of the yellowy colours now, but they're just a little bit stronger. Let's just put a bit more burnt sienna in. And then as I come forward, the yellowy, yellowy greens ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow. Make it quite yellowy though, because we want to build this up with different colours. Again, I'm wiggling the brush round, so I'm not painting in straight lines. I'm just wiggling it round, so it makes it uneven, so it helps it to blur in a bit and makes it um, uh, not a straight line. So this will be the hedgerow that the, the um, tree will be sitting in eventually. And then right at the front, we're going to use a little bit of purpley colour, which will be the roadway. Rather than doing the boring tarmac that it's on, I'm just going to do a little bit of weak purpley colour, ultramarine blue and Elysian crimson, just to put a bit of foreground into that. So don't mess with it too much, just bring it up. The more you mess with it, the streakier it will go, the more patchy it will go. So I'll just put a bit more green into that. She said, don't mess with it, and then put some more colour into it. Um, so I'm just getting it slightly diagonal across there. Right, so I'm going to leave that to dry. Just take any puddles off you've got around the edges here, even if you have to run a little bit of tissue around the edges, just to make sure that that is um, not going to sit on the edge there and cause a cauliflower. So leave it to dry, or I'm going to dry it with a hairdryer straight away like this now. Okay, so this is nice and dry now. I've dried it with a hairdryer so it's completely dry. 
So we're going to put on all the foliage now. And what I like to do is put it on with a sponge. But first of all, you've got to mix all your colours up first. So I've taken my um, paints here and I've mixed up puddles, quite strong puddles of yellowy greens, bluey greens, just some yellow on its own, cadmium yellow, cadmium yellow, ultramarine blue, uh, ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow to give me different shades of green because whenever you look at trees they're not just one colour green they're all varying shades and then some very dark tones and this is um, you can either use ultramarine blue and burnt umber to give me a very dark because I've been using the the green brush it sort of goes a greeny greeny grey colour anyway or my favourite at the moment is just a bit of indigo that's a really quick way of making a dark greeny colour and the way I put my foliage on um, with this way of working is I tend to use a sponge and it has to be a natural sponge and you want something uh, which would be a fairly rough texture to it. These are little bits of sponge. I get my favourite bits of sponge and then I, I, I don't want to part with them. If it's very fine like that, it won't, all you'll get is paw prints. You'll just get matching paw prints. So you want something really loose and feathery. Um, so it's something which already looks like a little bit of foliage that you could have picked off the tree. Another problem that people have with using natural sponges is that when you first get to, to use them they're quite hard. So what you have to do is drop them in the water, squeeze them, work them so they go all soft and bouncy, squeeze them out again. I'll just watch my tea here, I'll just put my water in the tea and then squeeze them again. So they double in size and they go really fluffy and bouncy but make sure that you get all the water out of them because otherwise you've just got wet puddles there um, rather than a little controlled area. So don't screw them up too much. You want a nice little bit of a feathery bit to work with. So that's all nice and fluffy and feathery there to work with. Take off any long bits like that. So we're going to go straight into the paint and that all suddenly, all that lovely paint I've mixed up has disappeared out of my palette because it's now on the sponge. And you're going to lightly put on some of the, the this is just the yellowy colour, just some little um, areas of the uh, the lighter leaves. Turn the sponge round and do a few more because again if you keep it in one position you'll get matching patterns and we're just trying to avoid that. So that's a lighter bit at the top of the tree. Leave a gap and do another light bit. So this is a lighter part to the boughs or the branches of the tree. And again another light yellowy green up there. Bring that down. This is now the, probably the top of the hedgerow down here, perhaps another little shrub at the side here. So I'm not covering everything everywhere with the, the, the same colour, so that's just a bit of the yellowy one. Then I'll go into my next paint, so I don't bother cleaning my sponge again, just go into my next colour, which is the more greeny colour, and put that next to it and into it slightly. So just a little bit next to it and into it slightly. Same as that, just underneath that one, next to it, into it slightly, perhaps a little bit up in between. Again, just underneath it, next to it, into it, and just in between. So just lightly doing those around there. Into my next green again, don't bother cleaning the, the sponge, just go straight for it, nice, strong, dark. Sometimes I want it so strong, I'll go off the palette here as well, so that where the palette's just been wet, I'll just get some yellows and greens. It makes your palette really mucky, but it's good fun. So, um, and a bit more of the bluey green next to it, into it, so it's just below that one that I've gone on before. If you do too much, it'll all run together and merge. So you, at some point you need to stop, leave it alone, and then come back and do a bit more. But I'm just build this bit a bit more at the bottom here, just to give me a little bit more of the bottom here to perhaps another little shrub, as I say, and just down the sides there to give me my foliage into these bits. I think, oh, that looks chaos, but it will come together in the end. I assure you, a little bit more here and there. So if you want to put some more colour in, you have to wait until it's dry. You can't keep going and going and going with it because it will just, say, flatten out. So I'm just pause for a minute. I will just put a bit of the more darks in. So this is where the very strong dark comes into it now. And again, just a little bit here and there towards the centre of the, tr the tree and just towards the, the base of the um, front part, the foliage at the bottom here just to give you some depth into that. Let's get more and more into that. And this you might find you want to put some more on in a little while, but it's starting to, it's starting to blend in now, so it comes a point where I have to stop and leave it alone with that. And I'll come back and do 
just a little bit more. So I'm just doing bits where I think it needs a, a branch or a bough. So I've put the colour on, but I've, I've left gaps in between it. You have to have gaps in your tree, somewhere for the birds to fly through, really, and also where you're going to have your branches showing through. So while that bit's drying, I might just put that down to one side. And I can start to put a few shadows on the foreground here. And I'll, so I'll just build up a little bit more darks into the bottom here as well. So with this, I'm just going to put a few shadows across the land here, across the roadway. So just bringing the purples across here. This is just ultramarine blue and Elysian crimson. Just touch it into that foliage at the front. I'm just thinking light's coming that way. So it's just going to give some little bits of the uneven shadows coming across the, the front here. So there's a little gap there so it won't be so high. And then we've got another tree or a little shrub coming across there, just onto the dry paper to break this up. So bluey, purpley colours. It's almost horizontal. A lot of people make those too steep and it looks like it's, it's going up a hill, but if it's almost horizontal, it'll look like it's going across the, the roadway there and into the, the bottom of that shrub there. While that's still there, I'm just going to dot in a bit more dark, just down the bottom, so it sort of blends in with those shadows and into the bottom of that sponging. So I'm just dotting it in while that's all still wet, so it makes it softer and just merges just a little bit more down the bottom here to give you a bit more of a base to the, the bottom of the picture. So again, I'm just going to pause for a minute, just let that dry out. And then we can start building up a little bit more of the foliage. OK, I'm just going to stop there and let it dry a moment. Right, so that's all nice and dry now. So um, I've just put the shadows on there. If you want to, you can just get a little bit more sponge and just do that bottom edge again to make it even darker because it does tend to smudge and run a little bit. You can just put some little bits coming out into the roadway there to make it a little bit more natural looking. Right, so now we're going to put the trunks into this and the, the branches. So I'm going to pick an area around here. If you prefer to draw it in first, you can do. But I'm going to use a little bit of weak brownie grey to start with and then a stronger, darker colour to put into the side of the trunk. So weaker brownie grey. And I'm going to go in between some of these bits of sponging in some places. So where I've got the bit of sponging in here, it's a bit looks a bit fiddly to start with, but it does come together. So you can't paint your trunks or the, the branches over the top of all the um, tree. You've got to paint it in between the bits of sponging on there. So where it's where you haven't got sponging, you paint it in a little bit of the um, dark part of the trunk. I'm just going to go over that little bit on the side here. Just let that run into the side of the brown. I've just gone in with a, something slightly darker down here and slightly darker down the bottom. And then I'm going to go around this light bit. So it's trying to make it look like the leaves are coming over the trunk itself here. A little bit of dark just at the top there, just changing the colour of it as I go, leaving some light bits, leaving some dark bits showing through. So just tickling them through the little bits of foliage, less little bits of trunk you can see as you come down to the bottom here and you can see a little bit more as it comes up towards the top. This then will split into branches as it comes up the tree so I'm just making a bit more of the dark ultramarine blue and burnt umber mix. So as it comes up here you'll get it coming up through the foliage up here to have a little bit of a branch coming up somewhere up here and then as it comes out of the sponging again then we get a little bit more solid with the way the branch goes. So it's a little bit thicker up here. So it goes from thick branch to gradually taping out to, to go thinner and thinner into the background there, so into twigs and things. So I've swapped to an, an eight round here to do these. I might start using a rigger in a minute to do the very fine branches, but. So you can just start to see that's building up. You'll probably get another branch coming up here. Again, I'm just encouraging that to just show through in between the bits of sponging. So this is why when we put the sponging on, I said keep it open, leave some gaps in it so you've got somewhere for branches to go to. So this is how it's like magic painting this is. A tree suddenly grows out 
of this mass of little speckles here to get, let's put another little branch coming off there so it looks a bit more natural. The little branches coming out of there and then it will come up and then it will split and you might get a, a small branch or two coming out the top here. These branches as they come up the top get a bit fainter and more pale, a bit thinner with your brush. It comes to a point every now and again you have to stand back and have a look at this because you'll suddenly see that you don't want a branch coming off at a completely the wrong angle so you might want to just put a, perhaps another thicker branch in here somewhere. It is an old oak tree this one. Don't know how long it's going to be there for because they're going to alter the road just by me where I'm looking at this and unfortunately I've got a nasty feeling that this tree will go so it's nice to have a little record of it before it disappears forever. A bit more of a branch coming up there. You can always put a little tiny bit more sponging on like something like that if you want to put a bit more leaves and things onto it so to make it look a little bit more natural. I think there's going to be another branch coming out through here somewhere. So I'll put a little branch going off the sides in between the sponging again, nice and strong and dark. This bit will come down and it will join into here somewhere. So make sure that it follows through in the gaps. So putting these little dark bits in, you, your eye leads you through that picture so it actually joins the dots together, which is all very clever of our brains. And again, just want a little bit of a branch coming in somewhere around here to lead out into the picture there. Perhaps a little twisty one, coming a bit lower down, just bringing across here little twigs and things and into and away from that. That's starting to look a little bit more natural. Now I want to put a few twigs in so with this one I'm going to swap to a smaller brush. This is a rigger brush which is a long thin brush which is a rigger or a line writer they call them sometimes but it's just a nylon -y type brush and with this one I can do lots of little thin twisty branches. Always start at a branch or at a trunk and lift the brush off. Don't force it in the other way, start at the branch and then lift it off as it comes out into the open here to give you a few more little twigs and branches into it. So this is a quite nice way of just putting a few little bits in. I want to make that a bit thicker here. And again, just get it coming across underneath those leaves and then up disappears into the foliage up there. Perhaps another little twiggy bit. You might get a few little shrubs coming up here. You might have another little tree starting to try and grow in between those bits. And then out into the light there. Um, perhaps we'll put another one over this side. A little bit more. There's a bit of a branch here so it needs something to seat it in. So a little bit of burnt umber ultramarine blue again, just to touching it in to give you in between those little bits of sponging. Make sure the branches join together, that they'll follow through, otherwise they look a little bit odd. But you can't see any of the branches apart from the ones that you can see in between. I think that just needs just a smart, little bit more sponging just at the top there. So I just get my very grubby sponge, it's still nice and wet so I'll just get a little bit more paint and just up the top there a few bits, perhaps a bit onto that one they look a little bit lonely on their own over there just to put a little bit more in gives it a bit more shape that's nearly there now, I think what I should do now is just put in a few little bits of branches, perhaps a little hint of a fence or something down here. So in this little gap I've got, just a fence post or two, a bit straighter with that, into the foliage at the bottom here. That's another post coming up, disappearing away into there and then just run a few little bits going across here. 
again just bringing it in between those bits of greenery nearly there and just last few little bits we'll just do a little bit more on the front here just putting in a few little dots dashes perhaps a few little grasses coming up it is actually a hard curb and a bit of tarmac but that doesn't look very exciting so we we'll just put a little bit of dark dotty out onto the over those shadows to make it look a little bit more natural perhaps a little crow or two again there's the usual sort of thing with up here a little bird flying around at the top there's usually a buzzard hanging around here so we'll put a little little bird there and have a couple of little ones over this side and there we go and that's it